so um, I just needed to talk for a moment here because uh, I don't know if I sound emotional or not, but uh, I'm actually getting uh, teary-eyed a little bit listening to the uh, Democratic National Convention. Uh, this is day four. Uh, Kamala Harris is speaking. I think we're reaching near the end of her speech, maybe. And I think what's got me so on the verge of tears here is because it's so beautiful and powerful to hear her and to listen to the alternative um, that is Donald Trump. Trump's speeches hold no hope. It is full of hate. It is full of disgust. And that's the that's the worst part. It's like like this man tells so many lies to Donald Trump, and he gives off no hope in his speeches at all. It's just vote for me because I'm Donald Trump. He he, he has no policies. He has no plans. It's just vote for me. Vote for me. That's it. Kamala Harris here is talking about how to move forward and talking about, you know, peace and love and, you know, not bowing down to dictators and things like that. It's just, it, this is beautiful to see. And I, I don't know why I like, why it's hitting me right now because I've heard her speak, but I think this is the first time I'm sitting down and really listening close. I don't know, but it's just, it's, it's beautiful. And I think what's sad to me is the fact that there are people that are under the spell of Donald Trump. And I just want people to awaken a little bit and see the power that Kamala Harris is showing here right now and the love and care that she has for our country and about moving forward, whether you, you know, like all of her policies or not, you know, she is with America. I just really want people to understand her a little bit. You know, the the story that she's been, you know, that's been told to us from other people. She's, you know, I I feel bad that I did not know if Kamala Harris was going to do well because I, you know, when people were saying, you know, if Joe Biden drops out, would would uh, Kamala Harris do well? And it was kind of a mixed bag, and now there is no stopping this woman at all. I I truly am in such high hopes, and I think that we're going to be okay. But as a lot of people have been saying at the DNC, we cannot become complacent. We cannot slow down. We cannot just let everyone else do the work. We have got to be hopeful. We've got to stay strong and we've got to keep pushing forward because unfortunately there are still some people that just do not want to study Donald Trump. They do not even want to give the Democrats a chance. They are just so loyal to their own base. They can't even fathom the possibility of voting for someone else other than Donald Trump because it's, it's just Trump. And so there are some people that will just not try and so we've got to stay strong and we've got to you know vote and so we've got to just get everybody on board as much as we can you know for people who may not be you know registered to vote you know you've got to you know talk to them to be like dude if if ever there was a time for you to vote this is the time this is you know the chance to do it um, because it might seem like a key, you know, sentence to say about, um, you know, um, how important this election is, that this is the most important election of our lifetime. And that's not, um, it's not, um, it's not false. Um, it's not them just using it to make it sound scary or, you know, make it sound as important because, I mean, it is important to do. This is quite possibly the most important election that we will ever face in American history, potentially, because this is the election that's going to show uh, 
everyone, you know, in the future, which side of history did we stand in America? Did we go with moving forward or did we move going backwards with the man who just got granted with complete uh, immunity to do whatever the hell he wants to rule as a king, basically, and nobody would bat an eye because the Democrats do not abuse the power that the Supreme Court basically just said a president can do whatever he wants. But because the Democrats are looked at as the ones who are supposed to be so clean and pure, we don't abuse that power. We don't abuse that power. But Donald Trump would. Remember, and this is something that people might forget, is that, you know, when Trump was on an interview with Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil said, well, we're not going to go for, you know, you don't have time to get revenge. And Donald Trump's like, well, revenge takes time. He hasn't forgotten anything. This man is going to do whatever he wants because he's been granted the power that he desires, that he wants. This election is very important. And, you know, it is just, I want to get back on topic here. I want, because I've still got to finish the speech from Kamala Harris. But, uh, um, Again, I think what just made this so emotional and so impactful and so powerful is because the comparisons between these two speeches. I didn't even bother listening to Donald Trump's RNC speech. I can't, I couldn't do it. It's just, you know, there's too much. I've been paying a little bit more attention because I've been watching Brian Tyler Cohen fact check um, uh, Donald Trump on his speeches. I want to thank Brian for that. It is not easy to do and I'm sure it's very hard, but I appreciate him doing that hard work when the media is just not covering Donald Trump 100% properly as they should be. Um, sometimes this man just gets a pass and it's just, it's not fair. And, but just looking at these two people with their speeches, it's so different and so easy to tell who has the future of America, who has America's back, and who just wants to have one person's back. Donald Trump wants to just run for president to escape all of his crimes that he's committed. Um, and he just wants the power, but he doesn't want to do anything with it except, well, <laughs> abuse the power. He doesn't want to use it for good. Kamala Harris, you know, will it all be perfect? I don't know. But I know that one person, that this person, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, have the right side of history for America in their eyes. And they're going to do the very best they can for America. And so that's why I think it just kind of hit me. It's because this woman just has such a powerful speech, so full of love, so full of hope. And it just, it brings you joy to know that right now things are looking good for the Democrats and it's looking good for America. So again, this is the election to really register for, to go out and vote for. And by all means, do your study. You know, you don't have to take my word for it, you know, about voting for Kamala Harris, you know. By all means, feel free to do your research on who you think is going to be better for your decision. My personal opinion, obviously, I feel that Kamala Harris is the right person for America right now. And look, I've told the story before how I'm still somebody who is new to, you know, studying politics. I got into politics, you know, learning a little bit more about it in 2020. And so for Republicans, it should have been easy to convert someone like me into their way of thinking to look at them and be like, okay, what can you offer someone like me? What are your policies? But they just don't have anything. It, it, for them, it's all about being on the wrong side of history, taking away women's rights, taking away voting rights, um, you know, and hurting the border bill. You know, the border bill they, they you know, complain about, they killed because Donald Trump wanted it. It's like, so you got what you wanted, but then you took it back. So you offer nothing 
except what this guy wants. It's not about what you can do for America. It's about what, what you could do for him. The Democrats are the only one who seem to be working for America. And so it's just, to me, it's always been so easy to tell the difference between these two parties. Which one has the right side of America? The Republicans or the Democrats? I know I kind of did like a left and right thing, and I sometimes don't know which one is which, whether Democrats are left or right. I think it's left or Democrats, so I should have gone that way. But regardless, it's it's easy for me to tell who's on the right side of history here, who is right for America. And so my personal opinion, I just know which side I want to vote for. And I, I know... and. I have no problems telling people exactly who I'm voting for and, you know, why I'm voting for them. You know, it's not something that you have to, you know, hide from who you're going to vote for. I respect your decision. If you want to vote for Donald Trump, hey, that's your, that's your opinion. That's your right as an American to decide who you want to vote for. And I, always, I, I used to always say, you have the right as well to not vote either. But I think this election is too important to ignore. You don't have to vote. That's your choice as well, too. But I think it's important to at least consider the possibility of registering to vote. If you are ever going to vote for one time in your life, I think this would be the election to do it. And so I don't know if this video is going to reach anybody. But I wanted to make this video out here to talk to people and hope that it reaches somebody out there to reach somebody because if that re if this video reaches one person that one person may reach out to somebody else and and they might register to vote and they might you know tell someone else about registering to vote because this election is that important and it's like the, the democrats are reminding us we're in a good spot right now and the joy is great and the momentum is on our side right now but we cannot get complacent. We must stay strong and we must feel like that this election is going to be a close race because it could quite uh, very well be a close race. And that always gets me. I always hate when they see when they say it's going to be, you know, down to the wire, it's going to be a close one because it really shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a hard decision, but for some people like I said it is. Um, because just some people aren't studying out there and they're not really paying the full attention and they're just saying, it is what it is. I'm just going to stay with Trump because that's who I know. You know, I'm, I have a loyalty, I have a loyalty to him. I just don't view it that way. You have to keep an open mind. And look, I should maybe give Donald Trump the same benefit as well of keeping an open mind. But the problem is this man tells so many lies. It's like, how can I give you the benefit of the doubt when all you do is lie? So, sorry, I just, I can't, can't I, you know what, I don't want to apologize either. There's no more time for sorries. It's, there's no reason to apologize for telling the truth. So, I'm just going to, I'm going to end the video right now here. Um, and I'm going to post this on, uh, on uh, Instagram. I'm going to post this on YouTube. Uh, this will be a rare time that, you know, I talk about politics on YouTube because I try to keep that separate. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to put, you know, my thoughts, my final thoughts on the uh, the election uh, for YouTube as well, too, because this is just, it's very important. Um, so, again, uh, thank you all for um, listening into here. And, again, I don't know if this video is going to reach anybody, but I hope that it can. Uh, because this is just, I don't plan to get like a thousand views or anything on here, but if I just get, you know, some views and some people, if this helps somebody, you know, realize the importance of this race, and if it helps, you know, some people out there get others to register to vote, uh, I've done something good today. And uh, I think that's very important for me personally to, to know that I, I, could, I could also help as well too. I think that would be pretty awesome. So... Um, so yeah, it, you know, this is for people on YouTube right now. You don't have to like this video. You don't have to subscribe, you know, 
when I make videos like this. This is just for me to talk to all of you, just a personal matter here. Um, so yeah, with that said, thank you all for listening in. Uh, I meant for this video to only be like three minutes, but I turned this into a 15 minute rant, so I apologize, but I have a motor mouth sometimes. So thank you all. And again, I just, it's amazing right now. This emotion I'm feeling just because it's not sad. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and powerful, the message that Kamala Harris is spreading right now. And it feels amazing to hear someone have that much power and passion and love and compassion for America and for its people compared to the other guy who just continues to spread fear, hate for everyone pretty much. He's like, if you if they win, you know, they'll you'll have the worst country ever. This man just doesn't he, he it's like Joe Biden has said, you can't just love this country only when you win. Donald Trump doesn't love America unless he's the one who's in charge. Then he thinks it's the best place in the world because he's running it. Not this time. Convicted Donald. Not this time. We don't want you back. And you're not coming back. You can stay gone. Or better yet, you can uh, have your orange skin with your orange jumpsuit coming soon.